Hey, what's good with the YouTube? It's your boy Rojo, Convict's Perspective. And today is Friday. Man, it's that weekend, y'all. Hope y'all are doing good. Hope y'all are enjoying it. And I'm smashing the dash and sliding down towards a little bit of energy. Shout out to Big Flacco. He's a little busy today, so, man, y'all are stuck with your boy Rojo, man. But, hey, you know, in the past, we talked about the whole thing between the the, the gentleman from down south and, and the African American community with the uh oh man the race wars basically between the between the South Siders and, and the brothers. So I found an article, man, and it's really, really, really dope, man. It's about Hawaiian gardens, really, really, really old, established, respected neighborhood down there. And um, you know, this gets into talk a little bit about that. And this is dope, man. You want to listen to it, but check it out, man. This is from the Long Beach Press-Telegram, and it's back all the way in 2009. So bear with me, man. It's uh, But it's dope, watch. Hawaiian Gardens. Almost 1,400 law enforcement officials converged on Hawaiian Gardens in a series of pre-dawn raids Thursday as part of the largest federal indictment against a street gang in United States history. Barrio Hawaiian Gardens, Hawaiian Gardens' oldest and most notorious gang, waged a racist campaign to eliminate black people from the community via attempted murders and other crimes, according to the federal racketeering indictments that were unsealed Thursday. A total of five indictments charged 147 members and associates of the gang, and federal and state and local law enforcement officials had arrested 88 people as of Thursday morning, U.S. Attorney Thomas P. O'Brien said. Included in the plot was the murder of Los Angeles County Sheriff's Deputy Jerry Ortiz, who was shot in the head in June of 05 by a VHG member while Ortiz was investigating the attempted murder of a black man in the city, O'Brien said. It was the cowardly slaughter of Ortiz, a newlywed and father of two sons, that prompted investigators from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and the FBI to launch the nearly four-year investigation of the gang, which culminated in Thursday's indictments and a wave of arrest, which was dubbed Operation Knockout, O'Brien said. Operation Knockout has put a serious dent in this violent criminal enterprise, said Assistant Los Angeles County Sheriff Paul Tanaka. Tanaka spoke on behalf of Sheriff Lee Baca and the members of the Sheriff's Department, as well as the family of Ortiz. As Tanaka spoke, members of the Lakewood Sheriff's Station's gang unit, which Ortiz had been assigned to, stood close by. Although none of Ortiz's family was at the media conference, his widow, Sheila Ortiz, attended a briefing at the command center early Thursday morning, said Commander David Fender, who was the captain of the Lakewood Station at the time of Ortiz's murder. <clears throat> Excuse me. She was there at the command post and very interested in what was going on, Fender said. I think that taking part of the operation is almost like having some closure this part of your life. The indictment details attempted murder, kidnapping, firearms, narcotics, and other charges related to attacks by the gang, which is predominantly Latino and maybe operate mainly operates in the little hamlet of Hawaiian Gardens a city of about 15,000 that measures roughly one square mile. City leaders in Hawaiian Gardens support Operation Knockout. Hawaiian Gardens Mayor Michael Gomez said, honest residents should not have to live in fear of lawless thugs who act like it's high noon at the OK Corral. O'Brien said the gang is alleged to have roughly 1,000 members and associates who have dominated the city, making life hell for the majority of residents. The indictments charge that the gang not only operates in the usual criminal acts, including murder, attempted murder, assaults, and drug and weapons trafficking, VHG has also waged a campaign of terror specifically against black members of the community. Vario Hawaiian Gardens gang members take pride in their racism and often refer to the VHG gang as the hate gang. The main indictment states, VHG gang members have expressed the desire to rid the city of Hawaiian Gardens of all African Americans have engaged in a systematic effort to achieve that result by perpetrating crimes against African Americans. Gang experts and investigators testified at length about the subject of the 2007 trial of the killing of W. Ortiz, detailing the gang's long-standing hatred of African Americans. 
Jose Luis Orozco was convicted in Ortiz's murder. During the sentencing, the judge noted the 29-year-old gang member had not only killed the deputy while hiding outside of the lawman's view behind a door, but Orozco also allegedly tried to kill another man, who was black just a few days earlier, by shooting that individual twice in the back. Ortiz had been investigating the attempted murder when he was gunned down. The attempted murder victim was targeted by Orozco simply because of his race after he was seen working in the yard of a Hawaiian Gardens home, witnesses said. Orozco also boasted prior to Ortiz's killing that he wanted to kill a cop and make a name for his gang. Norwalk Superior Court Judge Philip Hickok said during Orozco's 2007 sentencing. The murder was committed without regard in front of two extremely impressionable and young girls, Hickok said, referring to the star witness in the case. In the killing of the deputy, two sisters, eight and ten-year-old girls, who described the shooting for a jury. Orozco arranged to have witnesses, including these two very young girls, killed so that they would not testify, Hickok said. Orozco is awaiting execution on death row. <clears throat> In the indictments released against his fellow gang members Thursday, federal authorities allowed a string of attacks. Federal authorities allege a string of attacks on black residents, including a shooting into the home with eight people inside. The document did not say if anyone was hit in the attack. In another instance, two gang members allegedly chased a black man, yelling a rape, racist epithet at him, and then beat him with a garden rake. The same man was later repeatedly stabbing, stabbed by two gang members, according to the indictments, which charged them with his attempted murder. Next to the podium where O'Brien and law enforcement officials stood were two large tables covered with dozens of firearms, ranging from small sub nose revolvers to automatic rifles seized during the investigation. These firearms are only some of the weapons we have seized, says John Torres, special agent in charge for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. They have come from out of state, many of them specifically from Arizona, Torres said, including a bullpup rifle, an automatic rifle designed to be light and maneuverable, a loft for the crowd of 200 media and law enforcement members to see. In addition to the guns, deputies, officers, and agents seized multiple kilograms of cocaine, methamphetamines, and heroin. They also found cash at one location, discovering 25 grand and other contraband. <clears throat> the investigation not only uncovered the gang's activities, it revealed the gang's strong ties to the Mexican Mafia, a Southern California prison gang, and to the Mexican drug cartel, said FBI Assistant Director in Charge, Salvador Hernandez. Ties to Mexico were also found among some of those arrested Thursday, who were living in the U.S. illegally after being deported, many of them for violent crimes, including murder, said Special Agent in Charge Kevin Kozak, who was part of the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Unit. Some are now facing life terms in federal prison. O'Brien also noted everyone named in the indictments are facing lengthy terms in federal prison, which require inmates to serve at least 85% of their sentence before being deemed eligible for parole. While the state of California has announced it must continue to parole a number of inmates early due to budget constraints, such will not be the case with these indictments, so Brian said. We do not have that problem in federal court. The indictment marks at least the second time in less than two years federal authorities have accused Latino gang members of attacking black residents because of their race. The indictment also marks the single largest gang takedown in U.S. history. Noting that the second largest indictment ever released was by him for a Los Angeles gang less than two years ago. Of the 88 people arrested Thursday, 63 were named in the indictment and another 25 were arrested on probable cause charges during the operation. An additional 35 people named in the indictment were already in custody and more arrests are expected to come. If you think we're gone today at the end of this press conference, we're not gone. We're never going to be gone, he says. Now, you know, there's a lot of a lot of reasons, you know, race, gang, politics, competition for space and, you know, making money. You know, there's a lot of reasons people clash with one another, you know, be it against each other, uh, Mexican Serrano against Serrano, you know, whether it be Crip versus Crip, whether it be Serrano Crip, Serrano Blood skinheads crips <clears throat> you know is it always a racial issue gangs cross you know gang lines are, are seldom crossed when it comes to race in california you know don't get don't get me wrong there's white northern 
Crips. There's white Southerners. There's white Crips. There's probably white bloods. I don't know if I've ever met a real white blood in prison. That's just my experience, but I'm sure there are, you know, that are accepted. So racial lines can be crossed with gang lines, but it's rare. Now, politics, street politics, and prison politics, they're a little different. Prison politics are right there. They can be enforced at pretty much at all times because there's nowhere to hide. You always have to answer to somebody. So it's really tight, tightly controlled environment in prison. You know, when things go down, it's orchestrated, set up. It's been a, a work in progress, you know, and it finally reached a boiling point where it happens. On the streets, there's not a lot of control. You know, people are going to be reactive to situations that they encounter. You know, you're out there hustling. You see some dude on your block. Whereas in the pen, you have to go check with him and him and him on the streets. You might just clap at him. You know what I mean? So some of these problems, they say, you know, are allegedly started during the riots, you know, with uh, attacking things that weren't supposed to be attacked. Then you look at other things, you see Latinos and, and brothers working together during the riots. It's hard to say, bro. It's hard to say if any one thing kicked this off. You know, it's more than likely a combination of events, you know, that transpired on the streets. You know, I hear all kinds of things from both sides. And, you know, these are only opinions. You know what I'm saying? These, like, like we've talked about on the show a lot of times, every individual's experience is unique. You know, there could be Crips and Serenios in one neighborhood that just chill and they're barbecuing and, and doing everything like almost together, like one big group, even though they're two separate entities. Whereas just two miles away, if there's a, a Crip in this neighborhood or a Serenio in that neighborhood, they might get the business. You know what I mean? Up north, you know, it's not really like that. You know, everybody kind of intermingles and problems are more between just small little groups of people, you know, in certain specific gangs. You don't really have the whole united wave of individuals all going against a whole designated different group. It's usually confined to neighborhoods and, and, and towns, you know, where through this group of, of one ethnicity might not like the other. But we've never really seen that so much up north where it's just an all-out war in Although it appears to be racial, it's meant really more political, you know, as gang politics than anything. And that's always going to be the case. Because not necessarily everybody involved in these groups views another group as different because of the color of their skin or doesn't dislikes them because of that. The gang politics are always going to come over the race thing. You know, like me and Flacco and Gunner have mentioned before, when another ethnicity becomes like a northerner, for example, they're not like, say, a white dude. That's, you're not a, a white dude no more. You're a northerner. So you're not going to be involved in these things because of some race, because you're not the same race as most of these people that you're riding with. So it's not, it's not necessarily racial. It's, it's financially motivated. It's retaliation for crimes, for, for, for you know, if, if you shoot at us, we shoot back at you, we shoot at you, shoot at us. And this goes back and forth and back and forth. And then homies got people from other groups and they're like, yeah, fuck them fools. They keep shooting at us. Oh, well, we're going to shoot at them too. Fuck them dudes. You know, they're different than us. We're the same. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily start off though because of any kind of racial differences, in my opinion. You know what I mean? I'm just giving you a perspective, breaking it down, talking about it, man. But, uh, that was a big thing going on, man. That was some tough times to be, you know, down south. You know, I talk, I've, I've, you know, since we first started talking about this, I've had a lot of people reach out to me on both sides of the fence, you know, uh, primarily Mexican gang members and, and blacks, you know, and uh, well, people were on their toes. People were getting smacked. You know, people were confined to the little areas where they felt safer, 
which was amongst their own people. But um, everything's not racist, man. Society's real quick to play the race card and play all these kind of different angles to get people to, to respond a certain way, to think a certain way, to vote a certain way, you know, to be manipulated into what they, how they want to present it. The news is presented a certain way by certain groups. So while was it racist to in the actions that were taking place? It all depends on your point of view and what you're trying to get on it. Could it be political as far as street gang politics, prison gang politics? All depends. There's a little bit of both in everything. You know what I mean? But, um, Fortunately, you know, relations have improved down there. They've always been pretty cool up north. Like, everybody everybody gets along except rival gangs. It's not so much the ethnicity thing, like in the Bay Area, you know, in, in the Central Valley, especially nowadays. In today's, in today's society, the 20s, 20s, man, people are intermingling way more than ever in, in history. And it's a good thing, man, you know. If you listen to the news, you would think racism and, and these things are at an all-time high. When actually, man, if you're out on the streets, you really don't see that as much. You know, is there institutional instances of this stuff? Man, probably. I can't speak because I might be treated a different way than somebody else because everybody's experience is unique, like we said. And we all got to understand that, man, that each of us has a different perspective we see different programs that give us information. We learn from different people. That doesn't mean any one individual's view or experience is worth more or less than the next person's because they're all different. So keep pushing forward. You know what I mean? Like people because of who they are, not how they look. You know, that's what it boils down to. That's today's lesson of the day, man. We're all, we're all human beings. And there's no reason to trip. When you got to handle business, yeah, of course, you're going to handle your business, man. But everybody's a human being. Everybody has a mom. Everybody has kids. Everybody does this. Everybody does that. Don't let any kind of differences of appearances or melatonin levels or that trivial stuff be the reason whether you like somebody or not, man. Shit's dumb. But anyway, it's your boy Rojo. Kind of a serious one. Um, hopefully, you guys have a good weekend. And uh, I'll be on live later on. Hawaiian Gardens, big raid back in the days. Crazy, bro. A lot of MA and NF history both come out of Hawaiian Gardens, man. So found that article interesting. Wanted to share it with you guys. I'll be around about 7 o'clock tonight. Take it easy. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all.